get to them at the end. Tonight's presenter, Brian Armstrong, has presented to us on a number of topics in the past. He is an independent historian, researcher, and author, and he has written or co-written the books South River, The Franklin Park Tragedy, A Forgotten Story, Story of Racial Injustice in New Jersey, and A History Lover's Guide to Bar Harbor, Maine. Brian, welcome, and I'm going to hand it off to you now. Okay. Okay, can everybody see the screen? Yeah, it looks good. Okay, okay, great. Uh, well, thank you so much for inviting me here tonight. Uh, this is a topic that I've been researching for the last two years, and it's been quite interesting for me because you get to learn a lot about New Jersey when you look at kind of like special events that took place. And even though they seem kind of these seem negative events, murder, disaster, scandals, um, I, the way I look at it is anytime you have something that's major like this, it creates kind of something where there's a reaction to it and then progress moves forward on it. And you'll see in each of these cases that uh, New Jersey has kind of dealt with a uh, particular situation and come out uh, you know, better off than they began. So I'm not just a creepy guy with these uh, interesting, uh, weird stories. It all started for me years ago. I was at the Smithsonian and I saw this book, The Good Old Days, They Were Terrible. And I was probably about 14 or 15 years old and I bought the book and I read it and I was just amazed because it talked about the era uh, after the Civil War up until about 1920 and just the things that were going on in the United States that were not taught to me in school and just about you know different types of things like impure food and pollution and I became very interested in the different aspects of history that are ignored and I've always kind of focused on those over the years. The way I'm going to present this is I'm going to look at the entire state uh, you know as far as each of the different items kind of linking it to a county and then I'm going to talk about Monmouth County in each of the different categories as kind of a featured uh, story from Monmouth County. And these are the topics I'm going to talk about. Railroad accidents, amusement fires, uh, forest fires, mass murders, plane crashes, police officer deaths, disease deaths, cars and bus accidents, organized crime murders, kidnapping abductions, crimes against children, clergy sex scandals, animal attacks, political scandals, ship disasters, fires, earthquakes, serial killers, storms and floods, industrial accidents, family murders, and then I'll end with New Jersey celebrity scandals as kind of a way to ease out of things. The first thing I'm gonna talk about is the uh, railroad accidents. And we'll start with Atlantic County, which is if you look on your, the map to the uh, right, it'd be this blue area right down here. And this particular crash happened in 1896. And one of the things about New Jersey is that they're one of the first states uh, that really had a lot of railroad tracks laid down there. And they started very early. They had very uh, early railroad companies. So with railroad uh, travel, you had a lot of accidents. And people used to get special insurance to go riding on the railroad because there were accidents quite frequently. This accident happened. Uh, at 5.40 p.m. when the Reading train uh, was coming and it, it, it went off into a ditch. And when it went, one of the uh, boilers exploded. So you had that kind of problem. And then the third and fourth cars were telescoped, which meant they were kind of like hanging up in the air. Uh, 1,000 people came to, to help with the rescue. And this kind of sets a pattern of most of the disasters that we've seen over the years where you get a lot of public health coming out to help people in the case of a disaster. 50 people were killed, 42 of them died at the accident scene, eight died later in the hospital, and 60 were injured, and there were corpses lined up along the side of the road. So it was quite awful um, situation down in Atlantic City. In Monmouth County, there was a, another crash, not as quite as deadly, but the distinction of this crash is that it actually had an ex-president on the, the, the train as it was coming uh, down by Little Silver Station. And it went off the bridge by the, Shrew the Shrewsbury River trestle and four ordinary passenger coaches and a smoking car left the rails. And ex-president Ulysses S. Grant was in the smoking car, probably smoking a stogie and having a drink. And fortunately he was uninjured in the, in the particular crash. Three died and a hundred were injured in this particular accident. 
In Bergen County, which you'll see up here, this blue area right up top, uh, the big event there was the Palisades Amusement Park fire. Now, most of the people that probably are on this particular presentation, uh, if they remember Palisades Amusement Park, the park that they remember is the one that was rebuilt after this fire. This particular fire got rid of the uh, park that was there, um, that had been there since about 1910. And it was a very significant fire where people in New York City actually were able to watch it because it was this raging fire. One of the spectacles that happened with the fire was there were 200 cars in the parking lot and about 100 of them caught fire and exploded. 119 people reported injured in that six people ultimately died. 15 acres of the park were damaged, but the owners quickly rebuilt. And the park that you heard about with the 60s and songs and saw the commercials with the you know, saltwater pools was the new park. It eventually closed in 1971 and the property is developed into apartment buildings and uh, you know condos now. And there's actually a plaque, that's what this is up here, uh, showing where the park used to be. Amusement fires in Monmouth County, many of you may remember, of course, the Long Branch uh, fire that took place at the boardwalk there. And this totally transformed Long Branch because prior to that time, Long Branch looked more like Seaside or Asbury Park or one of those types of kind of resorts that had, uh, you know, Kids World Amusement Park and fishing piers and things of that sort. Uh, the place, it all burned in 87. And of course, it's been replaced by Pier Village, which is a completely different kind of shore experience. Nine people suffered minor injuries during uh, this uh, with smoke inhalation. One of the things that was really surprising me when I was researching all of this was the number of forest fires in New Jersey. You know, you think of fires taking place in California, you know, or other places out west, but we've had some major fires here, and usually the fires are burning up, you know, tens of thousands of acres, which is just staggering to me, you know, to think about. And one of the worst fires was back in 63, the Black Saturday fire. And this was a time when there was a fires all over the state where uh, 37 major forest fires were burning. And um, the fire consumed 186 homes and 197 buildings. Seven people died. Uh, among those who were killed was the Burlington uh, Fire Chief, Frank Jacoby, who was leading a small group of firefighters. Um, and there's actually a monument for him that's out there. And Burlington County, if you're looking on your map, is this area right here is where that is. In Monmouth County, as well as Ocean County, because this was a large fire, 150,000 acres of Ocean and Monmouth County burned, causing $3.7 million worth of damage. And this particular fire actually uh, threatened um, various estates that were there that rich people owned at the time, like Rockefeller and Brisbane and Jay Gould. And Jay Gould's estate ultimately would become George and Court College later on. Uh, luckily, though, they were able to stop the fire before it burned these homes. That was in 1922. Camden County, which is uh, this county right here, uh, we has the distinction of being the first mass murder in the United States history. Many people think the first murder was the one, mass murder was the one that took place in Austin, Texas in the late 60s, where the sniper was up in the tower. But actually, it happened in 1949 with the 12 minute walk of death uh, from Howard Unruth, who was a, a combat veteran from the Battle of the Bulge. And he um, was a pharmacy student, but he had a lot of grievances that he kept in his diary. And one day he went out and he killed 13 people, five men and five women and three children. Many of the people were targeted. They were people that he had grievances with, but some were just random people that he killed. And this was a very horrible thing that happened. As far as Monmouth County goes, the biggest mass uh, murder here would have been um, the 9-11 uh, uh, killings from, you know, for these terrorist attacks. Uh, Middletown suffered the most casualties per capita than any New Jersey town with 37 killed. Hoboken had more people, but they had a bigger population. And of course, in Monmouth County, there is the monument, which is there to commemorate those people that died. Um, with air crashes, um, they, the area that I'm using is Cape May, which is down here, Cape May County. And there was a terrible set of crashes that took place in 1971 at the Cape May Air Show. 
Within a matter of minutes, four people were killed, actually in two different accidents. The first accident was a single plane crash, and the second one involved uh, you know, three of seven planes that crashed, and the pilots were all pronounced dead uh, at the time. And they, after that time, they did not have any more of the air shows at that particular site. In Monmouth County, the worst air accident took place in 1956. There was the Venezuelan flight that was coming into what today would be Kennedy Airport, which was Idlewood International Airport from Caracas. And they experienced engine trouble over Asbury Park and tried to dump their fuel, but then the plane broke, caught fire and broke apart. And uh, 74 people died in this accident. Uh, with police officer deaths, always a horrible thing. And in this particular case, this was a very early police officer death in 1902. <clears throat> Constable Harry Buck, and this would have been in Cumberland County, which is right here, the bottom. And uh, he had picked up Samuel Greenidge, who's a 28-year-old farm laborer who had been involved in a domestic dispute with his wife. <clears throat> and he arrested him. But Samuel said, can I bring my unloaded gun in the carriage when you drive me to the court? And Henry Buck said, sure. And he didn't realize that he had uh, his round in his pocket. And once he got into the carriage, he killed Harry Buck. And then he ran off and actually went back and shot his wife. And then the posse under Sheriff Henby chased him into the swamp. And they didn't catch him. But the next day, his body was found uh, drowned in Smalley's Mill Pond which makes you think maybe they did catch him. Uh, but anyway, uh, Constable Harry Buck, is his name is actually in the National Law Enforcement Memorial in Washington, DC, which is down by the pension building. And his name is on one of the plaques that's there. Police officer deaths in Monmouth County. Uh, in 1971, there was Sergeant Joseph Mon Montparo in Asbury Park. He was talking to an individual and trying to get him to stop holding his knife to drop his knife to the ground, and then he killed him with the knife. Um, and uh, then the second incident <clears throat> was in 1997, when Detective Sergeant Patrick King was murdered while he was ordering food in Long Branch. And uh, there was a 60 mile car chase that took place after the suspect stole Sergeant King's car, and then he eventually crashed in and he was killed in a shootout. And you, at the bottom here, you can see the funeral for Sergeant Patrick King. Disease deaths has been something that's very much on our minds these days. In Essex County, which is up this way, I think it's got a block from my face here, but is up here. Uh, that is where Newark is. And that was where this, the Spanish flu hit quite heavily in between September and December of 1918. I used to do presentations about the Spanish influenza, and I had no idea that we ever would be experiencing a pandemic in, in my lifetime. So um, some of the stuff I'm going to talk about now is comparing uh, that, that uh, disease to what's happening today. If you look at um, the amount of deaths that took place, 8,477 in the month of October, that was the worst month for the Spanish flu. This also affected Fort Dix with 863 people killed, and then also Camp Merritt up in Creskill where 578 were killed. If you look over here at the bottom here, this is the monuments uh, for um, up in Creskill for those dead. And it's almost really New Jersey's monument for the Spanish influenza. There were also other diseases that were out there that threatened people as well. <clears throat> there was the uh, polio virus, which struck in 1916 and also in 1952. In 52, it became quite bad. There were several cases. Lots of people became paralyzed, young children. <clears throat> and then the vaccine came out, uh, Salk's vaccine in, uh, in 1955, which kind of changed everything with polio. And then by 79, the United States was completely polio free. There was also the major influenza epidemic of 1957. And actually, when I used to do the presentations on the Spanish flu, People would come up to me and said that you know that they had had the 1957 flu and it was very bad, and then actually it picks up in their blood tests when they have their annual tests. There's something that is kind of a trigger that says that they were one of the people that had the 57 influenza. Also, there was a bad case in 68 and 70 with the Hong Kong influenza, 
This was brought back by uh, soldiers coming back from Vietnam. Uh, this didn't impact New Jersey as much as the 1957 influenza. <clears throat> and then we have COVID. And with COVID, these statistics that I'm putting up here are probably already outdated. Uh, for New Jersey, the deaths that I had were 27,972. <clears throat> the worst month was April of 2020. And this is the one statistic that where the Spanish flu was actually worse and they actually had over 8,000 for one month. Um, the COVID deaths in one day were 458, which was April 30th, 1920. And then for Monmouth County, about 1,647 have died. The worst county like the Spanish flu was Essex with 3,000. Gloucester County, which is, if you're looking on the map right over here underneath Camden County, the big story for there was the car accident that took place in 1969, the pileup. Although the article says it was a 22 vehicle pileup, it was actually 29 vehicles that eventually were involved in it. And what makes this crash kind of, you know, really larger than life is the fact that a propane trailer leaked and caught fire and actually burned nine of the cars up. So it was this horrific scene on the turnpike and it would have been right around exit two which is the Swedesboro um, exit is where around that area where it happened. Six people dead, 18 people were injured in this uh, foggy day accident in 1969. A bus accident took place and this was in 90, 1992 and it was in a similar location. And what happened was the, the uh, angels were coming back from playing baseball with the Yankees and they were down around exit two and the the driver swerved to avoid a piece of tire that was in the road and the uh, bus went off the, the side of the road. Angel's manager, Buck Rogers was hurt and at least other six people on the bus were also injured. As far as Monmouth County accidents, one of the worst ones that I experienced when I was living in Monmouth County was the one that happened at the Kolos Koslowski Road uh, overpass on Route 33 when a couple was riding in the vehicle, that's this couple down here, and they crashed into a few other cars. Uh, the three occupants of the Jetta and the pilot were killed. And it was a horrific scene with mangled cars. Um, actually, the one person that didn't die at the time had a massive head injury. So it was a very serious accident. For uh, Hudson County, which is up in this area, um, we have a kind of what you call a Sopranos kind of killing, an organized crime murder. This guy, Angelo Chiappa, Chip I think I'm pronouncing his name right. <clears throat> he was a uh, godson and bodyguard for one of the key uh, Genovese family uh, uh, capos. And this guy, uh, Richard uh, Boardo, he was actually the guy that replaced Abner Zillman. And if anybody is familiar with the prohibition in New Jersey, Abder Zillman was the man. He would go and get trucks to collect the booze from uh, coming in off Atlantic Highlands and in Long Branch in that area. He would drive those trucks, have the trucks driven to Newark and had warehouses there where the booze would be taken. And then it would be distributed all over New Jersey and all over the country. Um, he was killed in 1959. And this was the kind of the shift from the Jewish mafia to the Italian mafia in Newark, New Jersey. And so what's happening here, it's a turf war that's taking place in the 70s over drugs and other ga and gambling. And so they take this individual, this, the godson of this big capo, and he's murdered and put in his wife's car's trunk and left in front of the du two, guy, two Guys store in Kearney, which today is Marshall's. <clears throat> Monmouth County also had another spectacular mafia uh, organized crime hit. And this was a mobster called Anthony Little Pussy Russo. He was called Little Pussy because he had been a cat burglar when he was younger. And he had a collection of stuffed cats that he had in his luxury apartment in Long Branch. But he was considered a big mouth by the Genovese family. And so he was killed uh, in his apartment uh, all, and he fell onto all his stuffed cats. Kidnapping, I grew up in Hunterdon County, that's where I was born, and Hunterdon County is this county right here. 
And the big story out there was the Lindbergh uh, kidnapping. From the point I was very little, it was the story you always heard about. And the Flemington Courthouse, which is at the bottom here, is where the trial would ultimately be. <clears throat> and just kind of a refresher on what happened is the young son, the 20-month-year-old son of aviator Charles Lindbergh, was taken from the home uh, in uh, March 1st of 1932. And whether or not it's an inside job or not, we'll never know, but there was a ransom, ransom note and uh, Lindbergh paid the ransom and then the child body was found on the grounds. Uh, a little while later, uh, Richard Hoffman was linked to the crime because he had paid uh, a gas, uh, you know, a bill at, to buy gas at a gas station with one of the ransom notes and it was linked to him. And so they went to his house and they found other incriminating evidence. They had a trial called the trial of the century. He was convicted and sentenced to death. Harold Hoffman, who's up here in the corner here, he was the governor at the time and uh, he refused to stay the execution. And they told Hoffman that if he had you know, admitted to the crime that they would have given him life imprisonment, but he would not do that. And he was electrocuted on April 3rd, 1936. The Federal Ki Kidnapping Act came out of this, uh, it was a positive thing that came out of this case, and that became the Lindbergh Law. In Monmouth County, there was a case then, uh, where a six-year-old uh, child was, someone had put a bag over her head and was trying to abduct her, but she screamed and got away. And this story definitely is touching for me because I have a six-year-old grandson. So this is a positive story where uh, these particular uh, kidnappers were not successful. <clears throat> there was also another case in Monmouth County where these two individuals at the bottom uh, came into Millstone Township and they picked up four girls that were uh, walking around, and brought them down to Asbury Park, gave them drugs, and then sexually assaulted them. They are currently being charged with sexual assault, endangering the welfare of a child, and kidnapping. Mercer County, which was right around here, um, that is the county which is associated with the Megan Kanka murder. Now, you may not be familiar with the name Megan Kanka, but you're definitely familiar with Megan's Law. She was a young girl that was out riding her bike, and the parents didn't know that on their block there was a house filled with people that had uh, been sex offenders who had been in the New Jersey's Avenel Adult Diagnostic and Treatment Center. <clears throat> One of them had lured her into the house and killed her, and then eventually he was tried and convicted. He was actually convicted for death penalty, but then when the life imprisonment came into effect after the death penalty was banned, he's, he's currently in prison. Uh, what came out of this, a positive thing, is Megan's Law. First, it was passed as a law in New Jersey where, any, uh, where we're notified of sex offenders that live in your community. And you know it's a, a database that's out there for people to look at. And then it became the national law. The, and the parents of Megan uh, lobbied heavily to get this bill passed. Crimes against children in Monmouth County, one of the most hideous crimes was this one um, where this guy, Arthur Morgan, picked up his child and out of revenge against his girlfriend, I guess it was, brought the child to the Shark River Park and in the baby seat threw her off the bridge and she drowned. He was later arrested and convicted for murder. Uh, for clergy sex scandals, um, this would be for um, Middlesex County. This particular case is an interesting one because it, it kind of set the whole stage for future ones with Jim Baker and, and other types of you know, uh, people that have gotten into these problems. Reverend Joseph Francis Cadova was the uh, Conklin Methodist Episcopal Church minister in South River. And he fled with his 18 year old Ju uh, Julia Brown, who was a uh, choir girl with an excellent voice. And they took off and first they were lured back after this first trip uh, you know, out on their own back. And he went back with his wife and she went back to her family. Then they took off a second time and they were actually caught the second time in Washington DC and brought back and he was charged with um, you know, abducting her. Uh, he went to prison for this and he eventually was released in 1908. She, uh, during the second time that they were out, uh, became pregnant and she, they called her a mother but no wife in the newspaper. 
uh, after he got out of jail, they actually reunited. And one of the things in most of the case, most of the descriptions of the story online, they kind of leave the story at this point. But I did some further research, research and found that the couple actually fled to Detroit. He worked for the automotive industry. They created new identities. And they, I guess they married out there, possibly in Canada, because he was not granted an official divorce until 1922. And then tragically, three years later, he died of lumbar pneumonia at 58, and she died a few years later of cancer. In Monmouth County, there was the case of Father Brendan Williams, who was arrested and charged with sexually assaulting an underage girl in, in 1990s uh, from St. Veronica's Roman Catholic Church. This case eventually uh, would unravel due to the, some kind of discrepancies in the testimony of the girl. And eventually um, the Reverend uh, or the, uh, would, be, uh, a, would be found not guilty of sexual assault of a minor uh, in 2021, and he was released. Animal attacks, and this becomes for Monmouth County. I don't know, need to tell you where Monmouth County is. Uh, this is the shark attacks of 1916. And this is kind of surprising. We usually expect attacks to take place you know, by the ocean. In this case, it's by Matawan and Spring Lake, uh, you know, not kind of in the areas where we typically would see shark attacks. Um, and these attacks took place over a period of two weeks. And the remarkable thing is, is four people were killed in these attacks, which ended up being a huge media frenzy, uh, you know, not just in New Jersey, but nationally, because, and we really have not seen anything like this in New Jersey since. And be interesting to know what types of effects, uh, you know, kind of created this. One of the problems in this at the time, if you notice, 1916 was also the time when polio was rampant in uh, New Jersey. And so a lot of people had fled to the beach to get away from the heat, which made them vulnerable to the shark attacks. Another type of animal attack that took place in New Jersey took place up in West Milford. A Rutgers student was killed by a bear. And he was actually, this picture at the bottom right, is a picture of him, the last picture he took of the bear before the bear actually killed him and went after him. So beware, don't take pictures of bears. Um, in Morris County, which is up here in the, uh, up in this area, um, this is kind of an old school corruption case. When I read about this one, it's something like something out of, uh, I don't know, the old days. What they did was they didn't want, they wanted to get around campaign contribution uh, rules. So what they were doing was hiding money, like tens of thousands of dollars in coffee cups and transferring them at restaurants. Uh, the problem was they actually were transfer transferring them to somebody who was a plant for the government and they were caught in this uh, plot. And the mayor of Morristown, his wife, um, Mary Dowderty was one of the people involved in it, and she was just recently uh, pleaded guilty and was sentenced. Uh, and this is what they call a old school corruption case. In Monmouth County, one of the worst cases, and this is according to uh, Christie, who was the US attorney uh, for New Jersey at the time, he said the most glaring example of public corruption because the way the bribes changed the landscape of one of New Jersey's fastest growing municipalities. What this individual did, Matthew Scanapici, Picho, is he had actually did a pay for play where they bribed him and then he allowed certain zoning and uh, developments to take place. So it actually developed the area in Marlboro. He went to jail and was released after 21 months. With a state that has so much ocean, there's definitely going to be ship disasters. And in this case, um, New Jersey definitely had their share. Uh, one of the worst ones was the sinking of the Powhatan. And this is actually one of the worst cases of maritime disaster in, in US history, uh, where over 300 people were, were seen uh, drowning in this particular uh, uh, accident. What happened was the, the boat was coming in, in a very bad storm where it was, almost, it was like hurricane winds and waves. And it got stuck on the Harvey Cedars Shoals and basically the ship began to break apart. Different rescue orders would try to come out and save them, but they couldn't get near them. And they just watched these 200 to 300 people just get swept overboard. What makes the whole thing even worse as the bodies were washed ashore at Long Beach Island is 
the state hired this guy, Edward Jennings, to gather the bodies so that he could take the belongings and return them to their families. Jennings ended up robbing the corpses because they were mostly Germans and they had money belts on them. And so he took all the money and buried the uh, money belts. And then shortly after that, somebody found these money belts and wallets buried and they came after Jennings and then he fled the town. One of the positive things that came out of this whole disaster was the Absecon lighthouse was built. And see what initially happened was the boat came through and this would have been able to kind of direct it away from some of the problems that would have, it would have encountered. Uh, and what they found was prior to this, 64 shipwrecks had taken place in 10 years in that area. Congress appropriated the money for this particular lighthouse and the lighthouse was a huge success and that a single, single shipwreck occurred in the first year of its operation and it lasted until, uh, you know, operated until 1933. So you know, if you look at those lighthouses and you wonder what they're there for, they really were there to save lives. <clears throat> Ship disasters in Monmouth County, a real bad one happened up by Deal Lake and this was the sinking of the SS New Era off of Deal Lake actually took place kind of near the where the ocean was there. 300 immigrants dead in this particular one, also German immigrants. Um, and this, this also was had a positive effect where it provided a reason to establish the US Coast Guard, um, which helped with these kind of problems afterwards. This is actually the anchor, which is of the uh, new era that is in that area on display. Another ship disaster, uh, which took place in Monmouth County, and my father did two things in his life that I always told him, I, I always just envied him. One was he went to the 1938 75th anniversary of Gettysburg and actually met people that fought in the Civil War and saw FDR speak. The second thing that he ended up being able to do was when the Morro Castle, which was this particular ocean liner, it got caught fire and burned off of Asbury Park. And then it crashed along the coast there and was a burned out wreck um, there. He was able to be one of these visitors that went down and saw it parked there in front of the convention center right near there. And every time I go down to Asbury, Asbury Park, I always think of what it must have been like to, to see a ship like that. Um, this ocean liner crashed on the sand. 137 passengers and crew members died uh, and the charred wreck became this attraction by the convention center for months after. You can actually, if you go down to Asbury Park, they, if you go into the, most of the gift shops, they'll sh sell either postcards or coasters with the Morro Castle picture on it. This was another really bad uh, thing that happened off the Jersey Shore in Monmouth County. And this was a German U-boat sunk the RP Restore, which was carrying a full load of crude, was torpedoed by the German submarine, the, uh, the U-578. Uh, and caught fire, 48 uh, crew members died, two survivors. This was really a reminder of the war. And if you, most of the worst time for New Jersey was from 42 to 43. And my father had told me that when you went down to the shore at that time, you would find different types of items that had been on ships, tar, tar bar, balls and wreckage, and, and even some you know, sailor bodies would wash up. It was definitely not the time to go to the beach in Jersey. Also, that was, that was the time when most of the windows had to be blacked out at night because they didn't want the uh, Germans to be able to attack the coastal cities. A huge fire took place in Patterson. And if you're looking at uh, this Passaic County, it's this weird county up here. And that was in 1902. And most people you know, that probably are familiar with Patterson, the city you're familiar with is not the one that was there in 1902 because 459 buildings burned. It burned up large businesses, banks, city hall, five churches, the public library with 37,000 books. 500 families lost their homes. Huge losses here with 8.8 .8 million, which was a lot of money back then uh, in 1902. Only one death from Mrs. Brown who died. She's 80 years old and then two other men were killed. So it was a very low death rate for such a large fire. Some of the firefighters were also burned in this fire. As far as Monmouth County goes, one of, to me, one of the worst fires was the burning of the Clarksburg Inn, which was over in um, Millstone area, 165 year old restaurant bar. When you'd walk into this place, you just felt the history. 
Um, it just was a very unusual kind of building that had been built over the years. And uh, when it went, all that history went with it. I mean, it had been there on the carriage route uh, through New Jersey in the early days. And within you know, eight hours, it was gone and was rubble. We don't think of New Jersey for earthquakes, but down in Salem County, right down here, there was this quake that took place in 1973, which was the Pennsville quake. It's the biggest one. It was a 3.8, which you know, compared to California is nothing. Uh, but it was the largest recorded event uh, that occurred in New Jersey. And normally most of the fear of earthquakes in New Jersey takes place in the north, which is the Ramapo Fault, which actually would go all the way to where the Indian Point nuclear power plant was. And that was one of the concerns they had with that power plant is that they fear that sometime there would be some kind of seismic event that would take place there. Um, Fortunately, nothing did. Uh, other types of things that have taken place, and this was in Monmouth County, would have been the Monmouth County quake of 79, which took place in uh, the Marlboro area, which was a 3.5. Uh, again, not a huge one, but it was felt by the area. And then there was this Delaware quake that a lot of people felt in uh, 2017, that it was a 4.1, and so it had a lot of impact in South Jersey and in different places within the state. And then there was also a freehold quake that took place in 2020, and this was a 3.1. A lot of these smaller quakes, what you end up hearing is noises, and I was living in Manassas years ago, and we had a quake down there that just kind of made this blasting noise, and that oftentimes is what happens in small quakes. In Somerset County, um, which is right around here, um, this is the, one of the uh, worst serial killers in US history, and some say the worst serial killer. He ended his reign of terror because he was, he was stopped at the Somerset Medical Center in Somerville. Uh, his name was Ed, Charles Edmund Cullen. He had traveled around to various hospitals over the years and had killed uh, people through their IV, uh, bags and through lethal injection. Uh, he is at least confessed to 40 murders. People claim that he may have killed as many as 400 people during the period of time that he worked as a nurse, which was I think about 16 years. Um, so this is considered a, you know, a very uh, awful individual that um, was from the state. Another person that, that's kind of mentioned it had some very much uh, notoriety outside of the state is the Iceman. And there's actually a movie that is out that has Michael Savage in it. And the Iceman uh, was, was a killer primarily of people that, in, that were business associates of him and his crime activities. He actually had a very um, kind of domestic situation where his family didn't know anything was going on. He had two kids and his wife and he'd go back to Dumont, Bergen County, and everything was fine. His neighbors thought he was a nice guy, but he was a guy that would kill people, and then he put them on ice to confuse the authorities and the coroners about when the time and date of death. And he had this accomplice, uh, Robert Prongay, who was a um, Mr. Softy uh, truck driver, and that's where he would put the bodies. And so to this day, when I see Mr. Softy, I'm always a little bit like, ooh. But uh, one of the things, if you want to learn more about him, you can either see the, the um, Michael Savage movie or also there's YouTube videos that the individual made while he was in prison. He is said to have killed at least 100 people. Serial killers in Monmouth County, there's two. That uh, one was uh, Robert Zanarski uh, for, that uh, from most of his killings were in the Atlantic Highlands area of Monmouth County. Uh, killed a number of young girls. Uh, he, he also killed a police officer. He was eventually caught, and um, he actually was, you know, was, uh, convicted and died in prison in 2008. A second serial killer, Richard Bergenwald, killed people at the same time and also had killed at least, uh, you know, nine people. He had the distinction of being born the same year as the previous guy and also dying in prison the same year in 2008 as him. When they raided his house, it appeared that he was looking to do a bigger type of thing because in his house, he had several pipe bombs, handguns, rifles, shotguns, a machine gun, 
uh, chlorine uh, hydride, a live uh, puffer aider, and all different other things that indicated that he was going to try to do some larger type of mass killing event. Sussex County, uh, which is up in the far north area here, this green county up here, you would, uh, you would not think that it would be associated with storms as much as the counties that are located on the ocean or those that are located on the Delaware River. But in this case, with Hurricane Diane in 1955, there was $2 million worth of damage caused by the rain dumping about eight inches in 24 hours, which turned placid brooks into raging torrents and rivers into swirling lakes. And it flooded all these towns and, and actually dams broke and all kinds of uh, flooding occurred. And recently they actually had a display in one of their museums up there of different photos of the damage during Hurricane, Diana, Hurricane Donna. Um, the Great Blizzard of 88, uh, many have heard about this one. This is the, the big snowstorm that took place in the late 1800s, uh, where 200 people froze to death in New Jersey and actually 200 in New York City. Uh, one of the people that died in New York <clears throat> with the two feet of snow was Roscoe Conklin, this individual that's up here in the corner. And he um, was probably one of the most powerful men in the late 1800s, kind of a kingmaker. And he had actually been in lower Manhattan and, and wanted to go up to Midtown, but the carriages had really exorbitant prices. And so he decided to walk. And along the way, he got sick from the storm and he would die a few weeks later. Uh, this was a storm that people talked about, you know, for generations afterwards, because it was quite, quite bad. A large storm that's kind of been forgotten in Monmouth County has been the Thanksgiving Day storm of 1950. This is a large costly storm with gusts of winds of 108 miles per hour. The storm hit 24 different states, killing 353 people, causing $70 million worth of damage. And it's usually one of these ones that um, it was called the storm of the century, but nobody really talks much about it anymore. But of course, for most of us here, the storm that's in all of our memories is Sandy and what a devastating effect it had on uh, Monmouth County and all different counties that you know, were located in New Jersey. I can remember going down to um, you know, the, the beach and seeing just the, the, the mounds of stuff that had been destroyed from flooding and the piles of sand and the trees just torn uh, all, all over the place, uh, you know, down in roads. Um, going down to houses in Tom's River where I'd have a meal with a friend and look over and there'd be an empty lot where a home used to be. Uh, Sandy um, had 233 deaths with 40 of those taking place in New Jersey and damage into the billions and we're still uh, recovering from Sandy. Industrial accidents, there's been a number of them in New Jersey. This particular one um, is in Hudson County. I mean, in Union County, I'm sorry, which is right in this area. And it was in Linden, New Jersey. Now, many probably don't remember the Humble Oil Company, but it was a major oil company in the US for a number of years. It was eventually bought by uh, uh, SO um, you know, of New Jersey, uh, Standard Oil of New Jersey, I should say. And um, by the time this accident took place in December 6 of 1970, uh, they were the owner of it. And what happened, um, is they had this uh, powerful explosion took place. And this particular plant is right across from the Arthur Kill. And it's amazing how close Staten Island is to New Jersey. I mean, it's really like a stone's throw. And what happened with this particular accident, the impact from the explosions actually blew out windows of businesses and houses in Staten Island. And this became another second big event where New Yorkers uh, were actually viewing a disaster in New Jersey. Uh, as, this, as this particular uh, fire burned for quite some time. 700 firefighters worked to fight the fire. Thousand foot, flame, <laughs> thousand foot flames, which is hard to imagine. So furious smelling smoke and just, just a real mess. Uh, 200 men were actually working at the plant at the time. Fortunately, nobody was injured. A weird thing about this was that there was a call that came in just before it happened, indicating that there was going to be an attack on the plant. So some think that it might have been sabotage that caused the destruction of the Humble Oil and Refining Company plant. <laughs> in Monmouth County, one of the worst disasters was the Asbury Park, Neptune, New Jersey um, 
uh, fireworks factory that was owned by the Simone, 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 Simonio family. And what happened was it caught fire and exploded. Uh, and this was a very tragic fire because the 70 year old father of the owner, his nine year old daughter, and then another neighbor's child were killed uh, in the fire. Um, and um, it was a it, 70, 750 gallon pumps of thousands of gallons of water were dumped on this to put this out. Uh, and it was a complete uh, loss, uh, you know, as far as the buildings involved. It happened in 1930. Warren County, one of the worst types of tragedy that can happen is a family murder, whether it is a spouse killing a spouse or a child killing parents. In this particular case in Warren County, which is up here, this yellow county, uh, this individual, Todd Warner, murdered his family, his parents, Frank and Joy uh, Warner, who were owners of the Frank Anthony Salon in Chester. Uh, he murdered them and then he took their car and their credit cards and went to the Park Casino and was caught at the blackjack cave table. He was arrested and he's in, been in prison for 41 years um, you know, for his crimes. In Monmouth County, one of the most high profile cases like this was the Carl uh, Coppolino murders. And what happened was he was an anesthesiologist and he um, was living in uh, the Middletown area. And what happened was he um, had uh, his neighbors, was having an affair with his neighbor's wife and his neighbor's wife's uh, husband died uh, suddenly. And then actually he fled, he actually moved out of town uh, down to Florida and took a big insurance policy on his wife. And then she ended up dying under mysterious circumstances. So then he was charged with murder of his wife in Florida. The woman in New Jersey, who was kind of the shunned uh, you know, lover, she then went and said that her husband had been murdered by him. So he had these two cases, the case in Florida, he ultimately was convicted of the murder of killing his wife with anesthesia, muscle relaxer. Uh, the case up in New Jersey, F. Lee Bailey defended him and actually he got off on that case because Bailey indicated that it was actually a kind of revenge thing from the lover. Uh, and this actually is interesting because F. Lee Bailey became the critical person also in the O.J. Simpson trial. Uh, he's often overlooked as being the, the uh, defense strategist in that case. Uh, the uh, uh, the doctor put out a book called The Crime That Never Was after he was paroled in 1979. Celebrity scandals uh, are always interesting. And uh, one of the things that I always used to see was this picture of Frank Sinatra, you know, his mugshot. And actually Andy Warhol took the same mugshot and you know, created a picture from it. But I always thought was Frank charged with like breaking and entering or being in a bar fight or doing something, but what he was caught for was adultery with a married woman. And that was eventually, um, the case was dropped and dismissed. The Soupy Sales case, I don't know if many of you remember this one, Soupy Sales had a show on TV and January 1st, 1965, he went on the air and told the kids on New Year's Day, go to your parents and take money from their wallets and their purses and mail it to me. Uh, and guess what? The kids did it. And supposedly $80,000 was sent to Metro Media 5. And a New Jersey woman complained that her kid had been one of the ones who sent the money in. And Soupy Sales was suspended for a period of time uh, from the station. Uh, one of the more infamous celebrity scandals was the wife swapping scandal of Fritz Peterson and Mike <coughs> Kekich from the New York, they were the New York Yankee pitchers in 1973. They actually switched wives uh, and um, this Peterson ended up with um, uh, Kittred's wife, Suzanne, and the two in the middle here, they were a couple. Uh, what happened was ultimately the two people in the middle, they broke up, but Peterson and Suzanne, they ended up being a love match and remained uh, married. Uh, you know, for uh, they continue continue to be married. Uh, celebrity scandal that's actually got a lot of media attention is the Melrose Place uh, drunk driving case where Amy Locane, who was in the first season of Melrose Place, 
She ends up uh, years later getting in this accident in New Jersey uh, in the Skillman area where she had a blood alcohol count of 0.23 and she killed one woman and her husband was injured in the accident. Uh, she ended up having three years at the uh, Edmund Mahan Correctional Facility for Women. And now the judge has brought the case back and wants to sentence her to an additional eight years. I don't really understand the legal precedent for that, but that's what's going on with Amy these days. One of my favorite celebrity scandal stories, of course, was the Bob Dylan going to Long Branch and wanting to buy a house, but he had a hoodie on and looked like a homeless guy. And they called the police on him because he was a hooded, disheveled, rain-soaked guy. And when, once they figured out who he was, everybody was quite embarrassed that the eccentric looking old man was Bob Dylan. Uh, one of the tragic stories that we've seen uh, over in the recent years was John bon, John bon Jovi's daughter overdosing at her school at Hamilton College. Uh, and one of the positive things that came out of this is she, she recovered and her and her father have worked to uh, fight opiate addiction and uh, help other families. Uh, Mike, the situation, both my daughters were big fans of, um, you know, the, uh, this the show with with him you know Jersey Shore, and um, he ended up getting in trouble, which many people do, with falsifying tax returns and not paying their income taxes. And he went to jail, uh, and uh, he went in for a period of time, and then he was released. And this became quite a quite of a story at the time. Also, his brother was incarcerated too. And then, of course, the last celebrity story is the one of recent times with Bruce Springsteen, his DWI on a motorcycle, where he went down to Sandy Hook and he was arrested for DWI, reckless driving, and consuming alcohol in a closed area, which is an interesting story, to say the least. And then a little summary of New Jersey uh, kind of situations. New Jersey had the first mass murder in Camden, two biggest serial killers, Colin and the Iceman. Uh, Lindbergh kidnapping case, the Megan's Law case, two shark attacks in uh, 196, or multiple shark attacks in 1916, worst civilian maritime loss of life with the Pohampkin, uh, large Palisades amusement park fire, uh, deadly railroad accidents, one nearly killed a US, former US president, large forest fires with thousands of acres, and many organized crime murders. But of course, also there was the Bob Dylan uh, getting arrested for looking at houses thing. And that is the end. So I'd open it up to questions. All right, Brian, thank you for that. For the uh, sad trip through history, but hopefully uh, you know, we learned some things as well. If anybody has any questions, uh, please enter them into the chat. Um, while we wait, Brian, I, I have a question for you. So curious sure. as to how you uh, actually found all of these incidents and you know, how you went about selecting the ones to show tonight? Um, I had actually found a lot of them going online. Uh, there were a lot of different things and then they would lead me to newspaper archives. <clears throat> I have two subscriptions, one to newspapers.com and newspaperarchives.com and you can go in there and just find so much information from old newspapers and quite a number of New Jersey papers are in those particular archives. And then as far as selecting them, I wanted to look at ones that I thought were really different, you know, something that would people would have interest in um, and, you know, had some kind of human element to them that, uh, you know, that would, people would be touched by them. Mm -hmm. Michael's asking, uh, have you published books on New Jersey history? I did one on the Franklin Park tragedy, which was about a, um, a racial incident that took place in 1894. This particular presentation that I'm doing that I did tonight, I want to put into a book. I plan to, to make this a book. Uh, hopefully that'll come out, maybe not next year, but the year after. Um, okay. Um, Therese is asking about the Hindenburg. What, what county was that in? Lind the Lindbergh, that was in Hunterdon County. No, oh, the Hindenburg. Oh, the Hindenburg disaster. That, was, that would have been, uh, I believe, is that Ocean? Where is that Monmouth? Um, I think it's ocean because it's Lakehurst. Lakehurst mm -hmm. is ocean. Yeah. yeah, that would be an ocean. Yeah, I contemplated using that one. Uh, one of the things I plan to do in the book 
is to feature certain stories and then after each one of those list every one of the significant stories like for instance plane crashes in new jersey there are so many crashes that took place in the 50s and 60s that were a lot of them around the newark area so i would definitely include a lot of those um, you know in a larger list and the hindenburg would definitely be included Jeremy's asking about the Lindbergh case, uh, asking if Willens was the DA in that case. Who was it? Willens, was he the DA? Do you happen to know? I'm not sure that? on that. I have to look at that. <clears throat> I know that uh, Schwarzkopf was the, um, you know, his father was the state police officer that was involved in the investigation. Um, and I, I know a little bit about the case, but I'm not sure about that. Okay. Jeremy says maybe that's what he's thinking of. Yeah, because Schwarzkopf's father was definitely mm -hmm. very much involved with the uh, the prosecution of that case. All right, I don't see any other questions. Well, one, one, of the, yeah, one of the incidents I want to say about that is that there were a lot of bootleggers that were out there on um, the Sauerland Mountains, which is where the Lindbergh estate was. And um, once the Lindbergh uh, you know, case emerged, it became kind of tough for them to transport their liquor. And they became very angry about the situation because there were so many police around. Uh, and they had been a big source of booze for a lot of the college campuses in Pennsylvania. Mm, interesting. Okay. Uh, let's see. Do you know anything about an 1880 train crash in Mays Landing? Landing. I hadn't heard about that one. How, how, how was it a large crash? I don't really, I'm not, not, not familiar with that one. And we'll see if John replies to that. If, you know, if they want, they could send an email to me and I could actually get, get some information on it because I do have a larger list of different things and I could actually send that information <laughs> along if mm -hmm. they want to, you know, send the question to you. Yeah, we have other people noting other ones, the John List case, Black Tom explosion. Oh yeah, Black Tom is definitely a very significant one. And the Black Tom was one that uh, actually forever changed the Statue of Liberty where the, uh, the actual um, torch, after that, nobody was able to go up there because it was damaged from the Black Tom explosion. Mm -hmm. Did you come across any uh, KKK activity? Your oh yes. <laughs> Oh, yes. Uh, I, in one of the chapters that I ag actually had considered putting in the book was one about hate crime. And there were a lot of Bunst uh, organizations, especially in the north part of New Jersey in the 1930s and 1920s. And they actually allied a little bit with the KKK as well. The KKK had a lot of uh, activity in South Jersey, but even out places like where I grew up in Huntington County, there's a building right now, which is actually a church. Originally, it was the KKK headquarters in Huntington County. Um, but the Bunst camps were the most prevalent ones up in like Sparta. And they were actually German Americans that were pro Hitler and were kind of training to be, you know, Hitler youth. And then once the war broke out, uh, the US government basically shut them down. Mm -hmm. Okay, Brian, uh, did you give your email address? Did you want to give that out? Um, sure, it's uh, brianarm59 at gmail.com. Okay, great. All right, looks like that's all the questions we have tonight. Once again, Brian, thank you. Thank you to everybody sure. for attending. Uh, this was our final speaker event for 2021. We hope you can join us next year. And if you want any more info on our group, please visit us at middletownnjhistory.org. And I hope to see you again next year. Good night, everybody. Good night.